Tonight, we look at a Cold War German infantry fighting vehicle. I decide to hide behind some logs. Then an R3 does a magic trick on me. And finally, I dive into the pros and cons and figure out if it's worth it. The year was 1988. Computer games were being released in its most primitive forms and VHS was king of content. Almost every household in the first world owned some sort of a camera and color TV. The world was at the end of the analog age and on the cusp of full digital transformation. But whilst this was all happening, nations also invested large sums in new warfare machinery. The Cold War was still around in some form and it was still a few years before the collapse of the Soviet Union. Before the removal of the Berlin Wall, Germany was still divided into two states, East and West Germany. The East was controlled by the Soviet Union and had its own army known as the National People's Army, whilst the West was under NATO influence with its army known as the Bundeswehr. Literally the same year of the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Bundeswehr obtained a new IFV model. It was called the Marder 183, and from what I have researched and discovered, it has a fascinating history. Development of the Model 1 ran from January 1960, when the first development contracts were issued, to May 1971, when the first production vehicles were given to the West German Army. The vehicle was intended to be an improvement over the Schutzpanzer Lang HS-30, another IFV which was developed prior. Initially, development contracts were awarded to two groups of companies, the Rheinstahl Group and the second group comprising of Henschel Werke and the Swiss Moe Company. The purpose of the model was to provide mechanized infantry mobility to support the fast Leopard 1 and 2 tanks. The hull of the model 1 is a all welded steel, giving protection from small arms fire and shell fragments. The front of the hull provided protection from up to 20mm APDS rounds. Later variants increased protection up to 30mm APDS in response to the 30mm autocannon armed BMP 2 and the development of top attack cluster bomblets. Roll forward a few years later, the A3 upgrade program began in 1988. Tyson Henschel was awarded a contract to upgrade 2100 Model 1 A1 A2 series vehicles to A3 standard, a rate of 220 a year. The first upgraded vehicles reached the West German Army in November 1989. The Model IFE remained untested in combat for 38 years until July 2009 when they defended a German combat outpost against the Taliban in Chahar Dara district of Afghanistan's Kunduz province. Since then, the Marders have been involved in heavy fighting several times even today. These vehicles have proved to be extremely useful and have been praised as a great tactical asset by German troops. The question though I'm sure you're asking is, if it's a good tactical asset in War Thunder. Since there's no inventory element, the immediate answer would be that it isn't. But I tend to disagree with that. Let's take a look as to why. Now the first thing that you will notice is that it holds the same extra utility as the earlier 1970s Mod A1. The ATGM and Auto Cannon to name a few. But this one has a little more. Let's take a look at the armor. The Mod 1A3 is an improvement over the Mod A1, as additional armor plates are added all around the hull that makes it better for the vehicle to withstand auto cannon rounds from a relative distance. Any closer, and it's like you're sitting in a cardboard box. So then the question comes on how do you play this vehicle if it's so paper thin? Well, you need to play it super carefully. Rather sit in the back and use that ATGM or auto cannon to remove whatever target you can. The benefit to hiding and using that ATGM is that the turret is fairly small. Its commander and gunner are also quite low down, so whilst the average Joe is going to try and penetrate it, survivability is at least there. Well, in most cases. Oh, I'm gonna hide behind these logs and just have my turret stick out. This should be good. Yes. This should be a perfect little, snug little fit. You'll just see my little turret popping up from above. Ah, oh, 
Is there something else coming out of there? Let's see. Oh, there he is. Hello. Let's see if I can pop him now with an ATGM. Right. Oh, he's turning too quick. Mm, not good, not good, not good. I have to spam him. Spam, 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 spam. Spam, spam. Hit the turret. We'll hit the cannon. Okay, disable the cannon so you can't take me out. Uh, why is he not going down? I guess. Ah, it's this ammo of mine. It just doesn't penetrate properly. Oh! What? Okay. Though the armor might be a slight drawback, we should remember this is an IFV. It was built to transport and protect infantry from light arms fire and cluster bomblets. But there are some other cool aspects to this vehicle that you should know about. For example, that nifty 20mm auto cannon, which is super effective against close air support and lighter vehicles. And then the earlier mentioned ATGM Milan, which gets you out of the rough against more heavier opponents. So something to note is that the vehicle is only equipped with four Milan rockets, so use them sparingly. Also, the stock ammo rounds provide a good mix against the air, however might be a little tough against ground forces. Only later on when you unlock your own version of the APDS rounds, then the cannon really starts to get into its stride. So let's talk about the mobility. At stock, this vehicle is pretty slow. Whilst you do have a really beefy 600 brake horsepower diesel engine, it needs to be understood that the weight of this vehicle is around 36 tons. Something though I have to add is its amazing reverse speed. Whilst it has 8 forward gears, it has 8 reverse gears as well. That is super useful when you have to get yourself out of a knot you put yourself into in the first place. Now speaking about the technology that this vehicle holds, I must say it's very very nice and quite remarkable for its battle rating of 7.7. .7. Now the first piece would be the thermal imaging for the gunner. This puts it into an entirely different ball game compared to its predecessor. The mere fact that at 7.7 .7 you are already rolling with thermals means that you have a great advantage over the opponents. Though to note there are a few enemies that might have some too. If by chance you are down tiered, then you are way ahead of the pack and tank kills should come easily. Furthermore is the laser rangefinder. Now that you don't have to wait for the range calculation and even the adjustment of range on your scope, this vehicle literally becomes a super threat to your opponents on the field. Couple that with the upgraded APDS ammo and the fact that you can hold default HVAPT and HEFIT in your second slot you literally become a walking terminator, without the armor of course. Onto his side of his turret, I'm sure he's not going to see me. No he's not, there we go. Oh, ooh, that's not so great, let's back out, let's back out. Come on. Ah, I have to wait forever for a rocket now. Oh, that hurts, luckily I've got an engine at the front, rocket ready, let's go. Boom, you're out of here. Oh, there's a helicopter close by, I can hear it. This one is not peeking up though. Oh, there he is. Go, shoot, 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 shoot. Come on, oh, he's flying low. Okay, that doesn't help when the big mouse is in front of me. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. Come on, ah, aim, that's it. Knocked out of the sky, yes. That's a nice little helicopter kill. Back to business. I'm braving it here, going up onto the front lines. There's three of them in front of me. Two medium tanks. Oh boy. Let's see if I can knock one out. Oh, this is... Come on. Perfect. Go. Yes. Okay, back off, back off, back off. Back off. I don't want to overextend it here. An interesting history piece on this vehicle was that it was designed specifically to counter the BMP-1 and 2 Soviet IFVs. So if you're out on the battlefield, know very well if you score a kill on them, you're serving its true purpose. Lastly, let's talk about the price. Now you need to understand that in this BR, grinding out a tank can be very frustrating, long and costly. Though with the new economical updates, things are looking good so far. So here are the costs. The purchasing cost will set you back 420,000 silver lions and 150,000 research points. 
For all the optional extras, it'll cost you 213,400 silver lions and 130,200 research points. Now, let's dive into the pros and cons of this tank, starting with the pros. It's got decent mobility, the ATGM is good, it's equipped with thermal sights and a laser rangefinder, its 20mm auto cannon is effective against aircraft, and the additional APDS ammo upgrade is super effective. Now for the cons. Very low survivability because of lack of armor, its gun depression is bad for the ATGM, it's got a very big profile, and it only carries 4 ATGM ammo rockets. So my final take on this IFV is that it's a tough vehicle to start. It gets taken up very quickly and will leave you frustrated for some time. However, once you start to unlock all the optional extras, then it starts to really work well. So it's a vehicle I would play for sure, but it's not at the top of the IFV rank for me. Catch us in the next episode where we look at an American tank destroyer that many struggle with. To keep track of all our latest episodes, hit that subscribe and notification bell. And on that bombshell, we will see you in the next episode. Good night.